whatever. But it's, it's the other of, you got three tribes, and you're still kicked out of the other one for about another week, right? Yeah, another eight days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and you know, you'll be able to leave and go back to the tribe that makes more sense. And hopefully you won't get in, in as much trouble. I, I don't even, I'm not even doing much. You know? That's what they all say, though. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what they all say. All the troublemakers, I'm not making no trouble. Hello and welcome to level 102 of the Dalmatians. Thoughts and Players. Huh? <laughs> These guys, this guy. Of the, of the Thoughts and Players podcast. The gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy here with my compadre, David. What up? Now, I now what was the what was the reference? I, I missed it. You said what, 102, and I said Dalmatians. Uh, I think it's what they named the second movie. I know the original is 101. Uh huh. That, that, that sounds about right. I think they Seems did 101, like 102. Possibly they tried a 103, and it just didn't really go that well. I saw what I believe to be just fan art for a Cruella 2. Starring mm-hmm. um, Emma Stone because the first one I think did really well or she was really good in that yeah, one. I, I actually seen it, just so. watched that. It was pretty good. Yeah. Okay. She was good in it at least. Yeah, she's good in a lot of stuff. She's good in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Strong acting. Strong acting chops on that one. Agreed. Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, we welcome them into this level of the pod. Um, let's see here. Uh, if if there's ever a, a point in the in the pod that I seem to maybe be gesturing or doing something, but I'm muted. Understand, understand that as me clearing my throat. Allergies are afoot. Pollen is invading the world. And um, people are going to suffer. It's almost ominous. It's almost... Pollen is very much like uh, Thanos. It is, it is inevitable. It will be here and it will take people with it. That's my final thought. Can remind me, because I'll probably forget. Okay. Just remind me about pollen. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I give us a maybe 0.5% chance of us both remembering it later in this, but I will try my best That's to make sure I remember it. Very fair. Um, yeah, but we're going to keep going. Guess what allergies ain't doing? They ain't slowing down the games we're playing. Mm-mm. Well, actually, they kind of did, for me at least, but <laughs> persevered. So let's hop into it. Games we've been playing. Um. David, you started off off the last one. Do you want to start us off again, or I can take it? Yep. Doesn't matter. I'll go. Okay. Um, a lot of Apex Dead by Daylight, and you know, I should mention, like, I, I do, I play Pokemon Go every day. Yeah. Apex, you know, just to you know catch a Pokemon, it's, and it's spin a stop, like whatever. Like I, I do do that every day. Like I, I'm halfway through level forty. Mm-hmm. That's a stretch. But I, I never mention it on here because yeah. I I think for some reason I think like video games like sitting there and doing like strategy like TFT on my phone mm-hmm. or you know sitting at my computer playing a game right so I just just to mention it but well, yeah uh, Dead I, by Daylight I think it's I think it's a good thing you did right there just set yeah. the assumption for us so no matter what you say you're playing <clears throat> we can just assume an addition. Pokemon Go is there. It's there. It is there yeah. for sure. All right. And uh, oh, man, I I remember why I stopped playing Dead by Daylight. It's you just did. so frustrating sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But. But whatever. it's it's the other of you got three tribes, and you're still kicked out of the other one for about another week, right? Yeah, another eight days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and you know. You'll be able to leave and go back to the tribe that makes more sense. And hopefully you won't get in as much trouble. I, I don't even, I'm not even doing much. You know? That's what they all say, though. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what they all say. All the troublemakers, I'm not making no trouble. Right? But who, it's who not knows? like, you know, I'm saying KYS or anything. I like that. Yeah. Well, I don't like Okay, I I like that I that you said that and I understood what that meant. I don't like the action. Please don't do that. But I get yeah, what you're saying. That's, I get no, what you're saying. You're bad. not you're not being outlandish. You're not being super toxic or anything like that, right? Yeah, they're like, hey, I'm playing tank. To like, wish we had a tank. I was like, okay, maybe if I had a healer to heal me and you weren't trash, 
we might have a tank, but I can't stay alive exactly. without you helping me. And then, and then that's where it goes. Exactly. Yeah, I understand. Instead, you gotta spend spend however many days away because some freaking soy boy can't take the chance <laughs> that you ask them to do their job and be a healer if they want you to do your job and be a tank. It works too. It's to and fro. It's a two way street. Yeah, it's a two way street. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's how it works. But um, you've so you've been dead by daylight, but you're like, ah, this is why I left. So you're you're just are you itching to leave again as soon as you're able to get back into Overwatch? Are you going to say goodbye, dead by daylight? I'm back over here now. I don't know. I have some like self hatred in me. Like I don't think I'm gonna quit. I think I'm just gonna play all three of them now. Oh yeah, it's just gonna be the rotation. The rotation. It'll, it'll, will it? Do you think it'll fall to the same fate where it just eventually falls out of the rotation? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it might help having all three. I get frustrated with one. I can go to the other. Get frustrated with that. I don't have to go back to the other one. I have a third one to go to. That's true. I know. I got options. Yeah. Or I could learn to be addicted to an entirely different game. Maybe like a good game with story or something. That's but possible. My brain is like, well, you know what? No. Are you? You know that um, Ubisoft has their FPS X Defiant coming out. I, I will not touch Ubisoft. That's fair. That's fair. And you played the uh, the finals for a little bit, but I didn't grab you really, huh? I downloaded it. Yeah. I haven't played it yet. My brother plays yeah. it a lot, and he wanted me to try it. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I plan to when I remember. I never remember. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Because there were there were some other. I remember. I'm going back to like older games we had talked about. Like, uh, what was it Back for Blood? Mm-hmm. Was that for that was one that like kind of just came and went because that was supposed to be like we're yeah, reaching for was, Left for Dead again and it just yeah that was really... so fast I bought like the collector edition or whatever like the yeah you know I didn't get a it wasn't collector I didn't get anything but I bought like the biggest bundle edition or whatever it had the, all the cool stuff and mm-hmm. I played it for like eight hours yeah you're like uh, can't do it well well um for what I've been playing. You, you're you're stuck at kind of between two ish games. You're not including Pokemon Go. Um, for now on, how about this? Even though I'm not always doing it, mm-hmm. let's just make the assumption that I may or may not be playing Adventure. Let's just make the assumption really? I may or may not. It's up there, huh? Eh, I mean, sometimes yeah. when you're bored, you know. Yeah. The two games you. I have been playing is I have been playing Banner Lords because it's out. It is out. Mm-hmm. And I have been playing. Roller Coaster Tycoon Deluxe. Really? Yes. Yes. Hmm. And um, the reason I've been playing Roller Coaster Tycoon Deluxe is because Manor Lords won't load. What? So, so this, so this is how I'm getting there. So there's, let me. But when the game is going, when the game is running, it is, it is fairly well performing. It performs fairly well, right? It's obviously a beta open whatever type right. of game, right? There's like some images that don't pop up and different things like that. But otherwise it runs well and it looks great. But um I'm playing the game through Xbox Game Pass. Mm-hmm. And so there is a launch issue between that game and Xbox Game Pass where I I click play the game, you know, the game actually starts, it loads up, I get to the main menu, push load game, hit the hit the game save. It takes me to a loading screen and then it stops. Dang. And so I did research on, hey, is anyone else having this issue? Yes, tons of people are having this issue with with the with the game on Game Pass. And most people's um have said their solution is you just gotta wait. It is the most absurd, <laughs> it's the most absurd solution I've ever heard. That you just gotta wait. One person said on average it does it, it takes maybe three to five minutes to load. One person said, Yeah, you just gotta wait. I just had to wait 10 minutes. Another person said, hey, yeah, you just got to wait. I waited 45 minutes. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm an adult. Disgusting. I can't I, I can't even plan 45 <laughs> minutes ahead of my life. How am I going to uh, allocate 45 minutes for a game to hopefully load? So in the interim of it not loading, I've been playing Roller Coaster Tycoon and having a blast. Having an absolute Heck ball yeah, in man. Game. So, uh, but yeah, I think by the time I got done or was no longer able to access Mandalore, so I'd had maybe about six, six and a half hours into it. 
Okay. Um, so I've been trying to make some headway and making some progress in it. If I was able to play it how I wanted to, I'd probably mm-hmm. would have like 15, 20 hours in it. But I just I just haven't been able to get it. So um, those are the games I've been playing. And I've actually been scoping. Roller Coaster, Roller Coaster Tycoon I will play for a while. I've had to scope games to possibly play until that bug gets fixed with Mandalorians. So... You know, I don't know. It might be Roller Coaster Tycoon and something else next week. And there may not be no Manor Lords next episode because if they can't, if it doesn't load, I don't know what to do. Right. That's upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I, I try to like it. It's a, it's a beta. It's in beta. It's an early access right. game. So you try to give it some, 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 leeway. some, some leeway. Right. But I've also had, you know, I talked about, um, I think when I bought Wilder Myth, it was still in beta. Uh, when I bought Software Inc., it was in beta, and I think it might still be. When I bought Thronefall, it was in beta, and it still is. And I've never had this type of issue in those where the game just didn't load. Mm-hmm. Those games also um, exist in Steam, and from what I've read on forums, the game pretty much always loads in Steam. It's just having this this problem in Xbox Game Pass, which, of course, Xbox, of course you do. so um, is it on the game pass on the pc yeah do you have the 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 big bundle um the ultimate where you can do like yeah but it's not uh console available yet Um, but so it's just i just you can just play it on pc game pass so that's what happens i fire up the xbox app i hit play it loads up music I get, and then it's just okay. Loading screen, beautiful, beautiful work artwork for the loading screen, and then just nothing. And I, one time I tried it, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna be a dork, and I'm gonna wait five minutes for this game to load. And I waited five minutes for this game to load. And during those five minutes, that's when I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I I bought the um, roller roller coaster tycoon deluxe pack when it was on sale a couple of weeks ago for two dollars. It had it had the original one, and then roller coaster tycoon two. And I'm like, yeah, I'll just go ahead and, you know, I'm already breaking the rules by buying games I shouldn't be buying because I haven't. <laughs> so let me just go ahead and play this. And so I was able to beat the first scenario, Force Frontiers, whatever it's called. And then I'm like, this is this is fun. So I don't know. I might try it later tonight uh, to see if it actually works, not to play it, just to see if it actually loads. And then right. if it does, OK, maybe I make some room for it sometime this weekend. But I don't know. But otherwise, outside of that, that that's what I've been playing. I've been trying All to right. play, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> what we've been trying to play. What we've been trying to play. Um, yeah, so that's it for the games. I guess let's hop right into the topics. Ooh. Um, you want to throw out yours? You want me to throw out I'll, mine? I'll I'll throw out mine, get through it, um, and then we'll head to yours. Um, so right. my my yeah my my first topic. It built a little bit upon an episode we did a couple of weeks ago in regards to the dark age of gaming is upon us, right? And it very mm-hmm. much is. Feels like it. I can feel and see the clouds and the cool weather. But uh, to to go along with that, there was a announcement made this week that said that Square Enix, publishes most known for publishing Final Fantasy, um, right. is is going to kind of recalibrate their game releases what they choose to develop and release and because of that um, they're expecting a 140 million dollar hit now folks I don't know if you're aware Final Fantasy is a huge IP Square Enix has literally released two of them in back to back years last year they released Final Fantasy 16 to great success I thought um, and this year they released Final Fantasy Rebirth, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, to yep. even greater success. So even more copies. So to hear them say, hey, you know, we're expecting a $140 million hit, we go again to like the topic of like whether this being sustainable. This also builds upon a trend of, of what's being witnessed in video gaming, where we've talked about that games are requiring more more years requiring more time to be built they're requiring more money to be built they're becoming bigger and bigger to, to points that no one is asking for and then i was reading an article this is from uh retail wire so i don't know how legitimate it is it seems pretty legitimate but take it with a great assault this is kind of they're kind of basing their writing off of off a of business insider report you know we've talked before about this past year starting last year into this year there's also been a lot of layoffs that's been happening in the video game 
Oh, it's crazy. Well, another thing that's been happening is a reduction, it appears, in gamer interest. So uh, going by here in this report, they've said that um, there's actually been a reduction in game usage. So in 2021, the average gamer spent 16 and a half hours per week on games. A year later, that number dropped by three and a half hours to 13 hours wow. per week. Um, and the share of the population that plays games has also decreased. Now, let's remember 2021 is peak ish, maybe, um, you know, shut down of the pandemic and all those different things like that. People are stuck at home. What else are they going to do? Talk to one another? No, they're going to play games. I mean, they're going to go fight a demon <laughs> or a dragon or whatever they got to do. They're not going to talk to each other and, con and converse, or as I used to say as a child, conversate. They're not going to do that, right? Um, they're going to go jump into a world. They're going to, you know, I mean, God, I wish, I'm, I'm pretty sure Larry, and, uh, I think it's Larry and Entertainment. I, I bet they wish Baldur's Gate 3 was out in 2021. Everyone would be at home having sex with bears. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it, it's, it's what it is, what it, it is, what it is. So, I thought about what this article was kind of saying and wanted to kind of ask you a question as I reflect on my own interest as a gamer. Um, when I look at it three, four, five, six years from now, or, or yeah, oh, in the past up to now, has, have I felt that my interest in gaming has decreased? And it's interesting because I would say what I believe has happened, at least for me, mm -hmm. is that my general interest in gaming has decreased but my my interest or the hype or the excitement i have for particular games that i have an interest in is stronger if that makes any sense yes and i think that's because i think we maybe talked last week kind of talked about how i wish i could find more games like final fantasy 16. the mm -hmm. revelation i had in that is that most of the games i play I really feel nothing for. So when you when I when I get a game that really digs into me, and I, I have to remind people, Final Fantasy 16 had to really dig into me because they said it's a 30 plus hour game, right? Right. And I mostly like, look, you either do 18 hours or under. I ain't got time for that. Right. So it had to really dig into me. And so I think that's the thing. Like, I'm super hyped for Mana Lords, mm -hmm. but that's like and I'm like super hyped for Homeworld 3, right? Those are maybe the only games that I actually really truly care about, right? And then some of those games will sneak up on me that I find interesting. So let's say, like, for, for instance, I had absolutely no hype for Wildermyth. And then I right. played it. I got the game, played it, fell in love with it. And that's just what it was. Like, strong conviction. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious for you, right? You're you have you also have other responsibilities, right? You're a dad, so you got a you got a little one to look after and take care of. You got all these other different responsibilities. And have you felt that your general interest in games or in gaming has decreased? Or do you feel like maybe it's increased or is it about the same? So I it's it's kind of it's a hard one because I've I I'm really into gaming. Like I'm always wanting to play video games. Mm -hmm. Like if I have free time when, you know, I should be doing yard work, but I'm like, you know, I'm going to take some free time and, you know, I'm video games. Mm -hmm. I, I got an hour until I have to do something video game. Like I, it's, it's all, it's what I always want to do. And I don't even know if it's a want or if it's like an addiction to just, want to be playing something like if i don't want to get up i'll sit on my phone and play a game like it yeah it kind of never stopped being a huge part of my life since i've been playing games since i was like four or five you know i, I got sega for my fifth birthday mm -hmm. you know and the why it's hard part is i don't have the urge to ever really venture out and so far when I have, mostly the indie games have been very fun and cool, mm -hmm. but that wasn't really something I looked forward to. You mm -hmm. know, it was like you or, or Corey were like, hey, you should try this game. Yeah. 
and it ended up being really cool. You know, like if it, I I never would have played uh, Artful Escape, I never would have played Omno or Valheim or Moa Stray. Those mm-hmm. were all amazing games. But like even you know Resident Evil Four Remake, I that was my favorite one growing up. I put two hours into it. I'm just like, eh. you know, Dead Space. I I my youngest brother loves that series played the crap mm-hmm. out of all of them and i'm like okay i'll play the remake i never played the originals i played for two hours you know i just i don't it's a mixed situation yeah but how many hours I, uh, just out of curiosity how, how did you put how many hours did you put in alan wick too um you know i can no i can't show you right now um i think about an hour and a half two hours there's okay. just something about the two hour mark just around That's there. Fair. I just, I play for the first bit. I play for those two hours straight. Yeah. And then I never open it up again. Well, like I know a lot of, a lot of like online stores will say, Hey, you can refund it if you play two hours or less of the game. So yeah. it feels like two hours is the amount of time that you have. Like, like that's enough time for you to assess whether you're going to really dedicate more time to this game or not. I I mean I guess but I haven't returned any of them. Yeah, it's just a matter of like it, it's kind of like a feeling of like I'll eventually get to it. Right? Yeah, I I really I think it's a mental problem kind of like uh with uh ADHD like there's things you know that you have to do or you know that you want to do but if you have zero sense to want to do it it's absolutely just not there. Yeah. Even if you, I, I guess I, I already I'm mumbling. I even if you want to do it, but you don't you don't have the urge. Mm-hmm. That does it, which doesn't even make sense. Like you want to do it, so why why do you not want to do it? You know. Yeah, I got what you're saying. Yeah. But in, instead, I have 800 hours in the Dead by Daylight and 3,000 each in Overwatch and Apex. Those I can just constantly i i have a problem those are just it for for yeah i mean i always kind of feel like we're in the same boat in that instance where it's like i'll have so i i don't have like um i guess a sustaining hype into something like mm-hmm. I, I was looking the game i have the most time in is software inc it's 250 plus hours and i actually just started up a new run of that game so i'll be adding another 20 30 hours onto that but besides that right. there's very few games that I actually like will like constantly go back and maybe dedicate time to. Right. But it is a thing of you have, I have a certain type or a certain amount of games that I can really truly invest all that, that energy and excitement and, 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 and brain power towards. And the rest of it just kind of falls away really. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that, so maybe, maybe I don't have less of an interest. Like I was saying before, maybe it's not that I have less of an interest in gaming, but that interest is, I may be taking a note from Square Enix. It's more focused. Right. I was going to say it's more, it's become fine tuned. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. Growing up, new game. Oh, yeah. Let's play. And you just oh, yeah. play the crap out of it. And you're trying to play and beat every single one of them. You know, you're like, hey, I want to play and beat this. I want to play and beat this. You know, and now it's kind of like, I mean, it's almost kind of like vacation. I'm going to vacation in this <laughs> game a bit. You know? Right. That's the, only way, that's the only thing I can really think of as to why I would play a game for 250 hours is that it allows me to mentally go to a different place and just kind of hang out there for a bit, a place that's less stressful. And of course it's not, right? I'm trying to start a multi-billion dollar corporation. <laughs> I have to pay taxes and do payroll. It's not, it's not stress-free. No, it's not, not stress-free <laughs> at all. But it takes me to a different place and it just, it just engages a different part of my brain, I guess, that allows me, that gives me some relaxation it's the same with mana lords Mm -hmm. some relaxation you know and for you it's the same my relaxation is being dropped onto a map with 64 other people and trying to survive that's that's my vacation it's it's not less stressful at all but it's a different kind of stressful that i'm putting myself into willingly so it's different yeah (laughs) yeah well that's interesting i think that's but i do think that that's that's a sign is you have general interest in gaming decreasing not only do you have it it sounds like the just the population of gamers have gone down but of those gamers they spend three and a half to four hours less gaming a week than they did two and a half three years ago 
Mm-hmm. And in the in the interim of those two and a half, three years, things have gotten more expensive. They've gotten more expensive for us. I'm assuming, may not correctly, maybe not correctly, that it's also gotten more expensive for the developers and the publishers. So that's yeah. something that they're going to really have to think about is can they manage things like that or how they're going to navigate that. And I think that Square Enix is saying we're going to do it by norm. We're going to get a hundred and forty million dollar hit on our on our pocketbook, and we've just got to figure it out and go from there. And other places are saying, yeah, we figured it out. Let's lay off nine hundred people. You know, and that's that's how they're trying to navigate it. But right. I think it's just another sign of the 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 dark age of gaming kind of on its way. You know. Yeah. But like, how how much money is one hundred and forty million to Square Enix really? Like if I lost if I lost ten bucks, I'd be upset, but it wouldn't be the end of the world for me. Mm. But I also only have like a couple grand saved. You know, right. not living big. So like right. if they're a billion dollar company and they lose ten percent of one billion of it, that's not really That's a lot of money. I, I don't I don't know. I mean I you, that's a good question for them. Is it a lot of money? It seems like it is because it of the announcement like, of it. I, if I had 140 million, I would I'd be set. Right. But right. for them, it might be. It's kind change. of like that. It's kind of like that thing of Square Enix. They're losing 140 million dollars. Where do I find it? Huh? Right. <laughs> you lost it. Where can I pick it up? <laughs> Massive amounts of money, but that's true. Um, the other game I think I mentioned before, uh, created that was being. Uh, developed by Creative Assembly, and it was being published and financed at least partially or fully by Sega. That Hyenas game that they didn't release, they spent seventy million dollars on it. That's the first time that Sega's spent money on a game like that since Shimu. People, nineteen ninety nine, and they didn't release it. So I, I, it's 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 an insane world. It's an insane. Yeah. World. And let me tell you something else. If there's anyone that knows how to freaking make bad decisions until they implode, it's Sega, unfortunately. So they've got they've got to they've got to tighten that up. Hopefully they have, and hopefully Square Enix gets their self together because mm-hmm. I'm sure they're fine though. I mean, Final Fantasy's got to print money for them, you know. For 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 real, I, it's Final yeah. Fantasy eighty seven coming out thirty thirty. The, they'll be oh, yeah. still be good. Oh, yeah, they got a it's got a print cash. Final Fantasy never felt like it's been in the same space of like a Resident Evil, right? Where like six comes out and it is kind of it, it throws the oh, we don't know what's going on. Even like right. a bad Final Fantasy seems like well, it wasn't the best, but it's all right. I'll get better, 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 better. Cloud, you know, like you just hear someone in the <laughs> someone in the background just yells cloud, and it's all right. So uh so yeah, and you know, the, but the greater thing about Final Fantasy over other typical uh series games is they almost never connect with each other no no yeah it, that's really interesting it's they're, just their they story for this they one. don't they don't connect at all right there's like a canon but they're all like separate stories which is confusing and interesting it's interesting that's mm-hmm. an interesting take but it is confusing because i jumped into final fantasy 16 like Okay, I'm in the 16th one. Am I going to miss anything? And I'm going online, and it's like, oh, no, it just doesn't matter. It's just the it 16th of the thing. It's, nothing's connected. They mm-hmm. share some animals, and they share some art, art styles that everyone looks like they're in a boy band. That's it. Besides that, <laughs> nothing else Nothing else is the same. I'm up here like an idiot. I'm like, oh, man, I just beat 16. Got to get 15. They got nothing to do with, nothing to do with each other. In 15, they're you're, they're driving around in an Acura, going to wherever else they're going, <laughs> and and it's, it has nothing to do with freaking Game of Thrones 16. It's like, all right, okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I I honestly think the only ones that interact with each other is 10 and 10 2. Yeah. You know, but I I haven't played all of them, but right. from what I've gathered. And obviously, uh, seven. What was the seven retrograde? Seven something, path of the redeemer, and then seven, and then and then Final Fantasy yeah. seven rebirth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those. Uh, yeah, that's that's. But that's uh, yeah, that, that's it for my topic though. Just, All right. Yeah. Can uh, drive on over to mine and that Acura. That Acura. That you were yeah. talking about. 
Yeah. Uh, so my topic is on quite a few groups I'm in on Facebook, there's been quite the complaints of merchandise in games being expensive. Like skins are, you know, twenty dollars for a skin or you know, for a patch to to get all of the skins and banners and the heirloom for the event that's going on, it's usually around $120, $140. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, on the other hand, people are like, hey, you don't have to buy them. You don't have to support it. If it's $100, it's $100, and it's helping the people who make the skins and the banners and all this. It's it's going to the designer. And I, I looked it up, and from what I gathered on a couple clicks, you know, I didn't investigate, like, the FBI, but I didn't see anything of, you know, the graphic designers and stuff like that making commission. It was almost mm-hmm. always salary with a side of some of them being hourly. Okay. So, like, if the skin is $100 or if the skin was a dollar they're almost never going to see that money. That's just going straight to the company. Right. These are, these are, these artists are either salaried or hourly employees of, of the company. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my, my question is, should, should, you know, it, should it do that? Or it's, it's the company and they're just being greedy and they should really calm down on it. Right. Um, I'll, I'll offer an opinion and then maybe like just like talking through some thoughts. Okay. So like if is a company being greedy almost always. Right. So um, yeah, for sure. 100%. Um, especially when you're saying that a lot of those artists are salaried or hourly. I'm wondering, and of course you have people, you'll always have, I mean, for lack of a better word, bootlickers online that will march forward and defend an entity's predatory monetary practices. For some reason, there's always people. Uh, yeah, I don't get it. Uh, and so when they're like, hey, here's the thing, the 100 or 240, the, the pricing seems obviously like not in balance. I think people pretty much have a good intrinsic or innate gauge of what feels fair or not mm-hmm. and if we're like this pricing doesn't feel fair and they're like well hey this pricing helps supports the artist okay this is how they make their living and then you look it up and they're like it doesn't you just said that for some reason to the yeah finger. and like i i wanted to see if they were correct yeah and i it ended up just proving themselves wrong yeah 100%. <laughs> so i chuckled about it i was like that you're 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 argument is flawed right i now i am curious if there's a performance bonus that gets attached to that like if so many of your artwork gets sold in regards to being like whatever do you get a three percent bonus five percent bonus whatever it is i don't i don't know see, exactly how that might that is a, it out. Uh, that's a possible thing i did not see that but as i said i didn't investigate for a very long time that's not so technically it, it, it depends on how you look at the word support. I would say that that's less of a means of supporting an artist and more of a means of incentivizing an artist, right? Mm-hmm. So in that aspect, it, there may be a little bit of something to that, but I mean, it's it's mostly just greed, right? Of that sales, what percentage of that dollar amount actually goes to that artist? And if it's something like a three or five percent, you know, bonus, I mean, it's they're getting percentages of pennies on the dollar. Typically, right? So it's right. It's it's the company. It's 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 the incentive of the company, right? And all these prices, whether it's a hundred dollars or two hundred and forty dollars, these are skins, right? These are digital goods, which means they have they have they have no value. They have no value outside the ecosystem, right? Right. So the pricing of it is just whatever they want to make up. It's arbitrary. 
Yeah, hundred percent. It's a hundred dollar skin because for us it's a hundred dollar skin. Well, how much is this hundred dollar skin um, in Grand Theft Auto Five or Grand Theft Auto Online? Well, it's nothing. You can't play it there. Well, how much is this skin if I want to bring it, download it, bring it home, and maybe plaster it up on a on the wall or something? Well, that's nothing. But the actual physical items you need to get to make the frame that all costs money. So, so this has again, it's no value. So, right. Yeah, it's it's greed. It's companies. I mean. Obviously, they're doing it. One of the biggest culprits of doing this is like Bethesda with the Fallout 76 store. Mm. Well, they'll say, hey, check this out. This canvas bag, it usually costs 5,000 credits in store, but it's on sale for 4,000 credits. Well, I'm like, well, guess what? It's on sale for 4,000 credits because 5,000 credits doesn't exist. You're giving us a sale on something that has no value. <laughs> Right. And, and so like all right. these companies do that. I think that's just another example of it. But there is the aspect of, yeah, maybe it does help incentivize artists in some way. And you do want to do that. If it's cool artwork, cool skins. Right. You want to like tell the artists in some way. Thank you. Outside of just a tweet or an Instagram or, or, or maybe finding them on Reddit or something like that. Right. And mm-hmm. it makes you feel better because you do feel like I'm doing something for someone else. I'm not just feeding the appetite of a huge greedy corporation. But a lot of times that corporation has set the system exactly the way they want it to for them to reap the most benefits. So. Right. It's, it's a conflict. It's a, it's a conflict even with it. It it goes for that. I mean, it can even go deeper for certain games, like maybe like publishers or something. Like if you have an indie developer that gets picked up by a larger publisher and you want to support that developer, but you don't want to support the public. Like what? I don't want to support this publisher, you know, like, this person like this, this group sucks. Like, I don't want to do that. Then it makes it more difficult, but you know, it's the right. way that's set up. Yeah. That's, uh, I feel on, on the fence. Cause you know, like, uh, apex, for example, there's these things called heirlooms and it's a per person thing. Like, uh, octane has a butterfly knife. Lifeline mm-hmm. has drumsticks. Um, Bangalore has a little, dagger thing there's the many different ones and if you just have a favorite character and theirs comes out or you get the heirloom shards which is free by the way but you know if you're if you're sitting there you're gonna pay you know the 120 dollars or whatever understandable it's your favorite character it's mm-hmm. not really a point of supporting the artist it's you know you're supporting your game but it should be a little more Con- uh, not concise, but like these these companies that mostly do this kind of stuff have mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of people, and if half of their player base buys a five dollar skin, that's you know fifty thousand, five hundred thousand dollars or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Right. It's it's like the. It's, it's like the you already have the volume. That's part of why your game is free to play is to get the volume of people. Right. So to get the volume of people and then be like, we're also going to make some of these things like feel like prohibitively expensive. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it, it kind of feels like like you're just describing that scenario. Like like if your character, your favorite character is Octane and you want their heirloom, you got to pay one hundred and twenty dollars. Like you have someone so invested in your game and in the characters and in the mythos of this, right? It feels like you're almost kind of exploiting the love they have for this character and for this world by making, not just making something available, that's fine, but making something so that it's like, so like, is it a hundred, like it's really $120. Like, like that's, that's the value. That's the valuation you got to was $120 for this. When like, you're saying you have 50, 60,000 players you might at any time have 20,000 concurrent players and you know if you had 10,000 of them spend you know $50 on an heirloom compared to like 120 I mean you're looking at half a mil right so like right is that not enough for you because there's already people paying for like battle passes and like other DLC and stuff that's part of this right you already have other things that you're getting money from like having something that can celebrate a character or something that's really cool or neat for a specific character that also can showcase or highlight an artist that works at your company. I mean, it doesn't have to be that. That's crazy. You know, that's one of the things I liked about, um, 
Ninja Theory, and they have, and I forgot the actress's name, but the, uh, we talked before, the actress that plays Sunua. Mm-hmm. Like, they've really, like, elevated her and made her, like, really accessible, and they kind of almost really celebrate her in a lot of ways of, like, her being able to do, like, her, who, she was an employee of Ninja Theory, she wasn't an actress that they hired. And, you know, bringing her in and her being able to portray this character in a way they, they, that she does, they kind of celebrate her, and there's not, it doesn't feel like there's anything really exploitative or weird behind it. And so, you know, and it's not like an artist per se, but in some ways it is. It feels like whether it be, you know, like uh, Respawn with Apex or like any other place or, I mean, and of course we know Respawn isn't doing it. We know it's EA. But, um, <laughs> it, but right. yeah, but you know, like, like being able to not be as exploitative behind it would, would fare better. That's just a hundred dollars on top of a game for, I mean, you know, that's that's crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. It is yeah, it's I don't know, I, but these companies, man, they love doing stuff like that. It's 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 one of the ways they've made money. I mean, not only yeah. have they again the, the exception with Apex is that it's like free to play, so it's free to start. But even now, you know, we talked before about the one of the great cons of gaming is that they said, hey, if you give if you make game seventy dollars, we can give you more. It won't feel like we're nickel and diming you. And then they just kept the nickel and diming. They yeah, didn't skip there's, a beat micro, there's transa- microtransactions in those games too. Yep, in mean, all of them, it's it's nothing changed. Everything's the same. So it's like, where did the ten dollars go? Oh, went right to your pockets, right? Yep. Yeah. And, and even with that, even with you conning us for an extra ten dollars, you're still taking hundred and forty million dollar hits and failing and closing studios and laying off people. Yep. Because you guys suck at management. It's it's insane. And I I do want to say like I know this is slightly different. But like Dead by Daylight, for example, you know, mm-hmm. they are always having these DLCs of different characters from different franchises and stuff. And those, in my opinion, are priced fairly well. Mm-hmm. Like uh they're they're different prices based on the DLC and you know, like the one with Wesker and Ada and I think it was Rebecca, you know, like that one, that one's twelve dollars. You know, you get these three characters. And there's a cosmetic that you can buy in the shop that's not part of that price, but you, you could be you could be hunk as mm-hmm. the Legion. And then, you know, the uh Stranger Things DLC, you know, that was like seven dollars. You know, so that makes sense. You know, it's not absurdly costly and it's to help them keep creating their game and to have the franchise that they're pulling from make something as well. Yeah, totally makes sense, and I I commend that. Yeah, and I heard that 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 makes one hundred percent sense. Since like, just based off the fact alone, like you're saying, like they're collaborating with other IPs, so there's going to obviously be some money exchange there. You have the greed of Hollywood because they mostly brought from Hollywood IPs, right? So like, mostly, you know, like yeah. Friday the Thirteenth or whatever like that, right? So you have to deal with the greed of Hollywood and getting that in, but in order to like maintain that relationship and all that stuff and make it feel like things are still fair in regards to how you price them for people. Like that's the thing, because that, that's at least one thing that people can say, okay, they're reasonable at this. They seem to understand us at this level. This isn't something I have to worry about. I don't have to question the company, at least when it comes to this. Right. And it's not like, it's just about small little things that companies can do to just leave a bad taste in your mouth as a, as a customer. Right. And so like trying to avoid as, right. as many of those as possible, that's what you got to shoot for, man. You know? Mm-hmm. It um it reminds me of it. I may even do, I may do one of my topics may just be a whole rant with um Paradox Interactive because you mentioned like we've we've talked before about like uh like you know you were talking before about like like you know Apex nickel and hundred dollar for this and all that and stuff and like you're mentioning like they they like they release the, you know these different DLC packs they have these drops and they they release them fairly regularly right like they're they're pretty constant from what I recall. Yeah, daylight, I, like, I haven't drops. played in a year and a half, two yeah. years, and I'm missing like six DLC, seven. <laughs> so yeah. it's up there. So like, yeah, so, so another another company that does that fairly regularly is Paradox Interactive. But what Paradox Interactive like to does is that it likes to do is like they like to put out these sometimes half-baked games 
and then they have a DLC roadmap set up, and they just DLC it to death. Like, I swear to God, for the first City Skylines, if I say 50, I don't know if I'd be exaggerating or not. As far as DLC, you know what it reminds me of? The, the other IP that EA does is with is The Sims. Where they release The Sims, and then they release 700 oh content packs. Oh my god, I, you're right. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. It's insane. Paradox does the same thing, except the difference is, is this is, again, all about audience. So where The Sims is for, you know, The Sims, Sim, The Sims gamers are sports adjacent gamers, right? I, I've said what I've said about sports gamers, they're adjacent, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So 700 packs for them, whatever whoop you do, oh hey, I got a new flower I can plant outside of my house or hey, I got a new mirror I can change or learn how to learn speech in front of. With Paradox, they're mostly doing either city builders or strategy or grant strategy games. It's a different audience. So with City Skylines, they can get away with it because city builder audiences, they're not entirely adjacent to sports and Sims gamers, but they're, we're talking maybe one or two steps up, max. Like we're kind of almost right there, <laughs> okay? Um, and so like they can kind of get away with it, but you try that, try that with a Crusaders, it was Crusader Kings 3 crowd. See how that works. And you'll have your own fans sitting at a freaking world map table plotting how they're going to invade your studio okay because that's what these <laughs> that's what these geeks do for 17 hours a day i'm one of them i'm not saying it derogatory i'm one of them we'll be here right. strategizing but we'll bring a legion of horsemen from the north and then we'll you know that's that's what we're going to be doing the paradox and paradox interactive is based on the 17th floor okay we'll get a whole bunch of owls and we'll arm them with TNT and have them fly directly towards the window. Like that's what we'll be strategizing because you're going to do all these different kind of releases. They had another game outside of like city skylines. They had another game, millennia might've mentioned briefly. It's supposed to be like a civilization um, competitor. They released that. They have a bunch of DLCs. They want to launch for it. The game released broke. It was broken. A quarter of the stuff didn't work in the game. There's another one that does that, though. Jesus. Nickel and Diamond constantly releasing content. So, yeah, further clarifies my suspicions that, again, it's not Respawn doing it. It's EA doing it because that's just part of their formula now. This is part of the format. But at least, again, the hope and what they're selling it under is that this supports, at least their, their, their fans are selling it, that this supports the, the artists. That's why this is $120 because the... How else can you? Well, how much that? How much of that hundred and twenty dollars does the artist get? Well, a percentage, you know. But um, it's for the artist. And you're <laughs> like, you look it up, and you're like, oh no, they're just a salaried employee. They're salaried, so their dollar amount is fixed. This is it doesn't do anything, you know. Nothing. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a scam, a racket. We know yep. it is. All that stuff is a racket. It. <laughs> Just that the help further that I just remembered uh, on one of the posts, a, a commenter, they they said that they actually do video game design and they do work for a bigger company and they see none of that. Oh, a hundred percent. I can believe that. A hundred percent. Like I said, you just got the bootleggers out there. You got to compete with. Some of them might be actually fed by the companies, but more it's more and more just people out there that have affinities for games and they just defend them. It's like they're it's it's their Gettysburg. It's it's like why are you so <laughs> why are you so into this? Like it's, it's we can have a conversation. No, it supports the artist. How do you know that? I don't, but I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say it confidently on the internet, and that will nuke your argument. Like it's it's just insane. Mm -hmm. But um, you know what? It would be cool if they actually did that. I'm sure there probably are some game companies that do that. Probably, that, and that's that, why that, I I yeah. keep it open. Like that's what I, yeah. I from what I saw. Yeah, you know, so there, there there's probably a company or two out there that does do it. Not every yeah. corporation and business is evil. Just ninety nine percent of them. Ninety nine point nine percent of them. Yeah. Even better. Yeah, yeah, but there's but there's there's some of them out there. There's got to be. I'd imagine maybe it's like a smaller studio or something. Hey, we have these DLC. Maybe we have these different artwork packs. I know there's some like some companies that drop different artwork packs for maybe like loading screens or something that you can download and it just helps the artist, especially if it's a collaboration, like the artist isn't on the payroll. It's just 
we collaborated on this and you can support them that way. That's always right. cool. Same with like mm-hmm. download, uh, buying um, official soundtracks. You like support the musicians and the sound engineers and stuff. That's always cool right. to do. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess that's what it is. We're getting scammed. If anybody says that it goes to the artist, it doesn't. Do we know that 100%? No, but we can fill it 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame on you, EA and Respawn. <laughs> well, I don't want to say Respawn. I like Respawn too much. I'm not going to I'm not gonna blame you guys. Yeah. But, um, the end, end of your topic? That's it. Righty. Well, then I guess that takes us to uh, final thoughts. We can give a final thought about something that could be related or unrelated to this podcast episode. David, you had something at the beginning of this episode. You want to yeah, know, do you remember Holland. what it is? Okay. okay, there we go. Okay, so I haven't looked into it myself. Mm-hmm. So there's my, hey, now, this is what I've heard. But from what I've gathered, pollen is from male specimens. And the female specimens are what create the fruit and you know the stuff like that it's the creators and the pollen uh whatever that word is starts with an i but insem inseminates yeah okay something yeah. like that so yeah. it it the, the male pollen goes into the female plants or whatever and it creates and it creates you know uh natural trash whatever you know it compost you know it makes you know smells and whatever and Mm -hmm. people started building things and you know putting trees in the middle of the street you know kind of like grass it and Mm -hmm. other you know whatever they're like we don't want to have all this on the city lawns and whatever all this crap we're gonna have to pick up and everything so they just planted all male plants and stuff so that way there's no natural you know compost stuff that the city has to deal with so there's Mm. all this pollen going nowhere because all the the female specimens absorb it right there's nothing to absorb it so as time has gone on it's just getting worse and worse and the video that i did watch they're like they didn't really think about it much because if you planted nothing but female specimens there would be no pollen and no compost to deal with right it's true if there's nothing to inseminate it there's nothing to create the compost i was like that is that makes sense so again it's what i've heard i haven't researched it myself Mm -hmm. but that sounds like something people would do. So just to reiterate what you've said less gracefully, is that pollen is essentially flower semen. Yes. And and what usually would happen is that the pollen, flower semen, would go to the female flowers and it would inseminate them and they would have baby flowers. This is uh, yeah, essentially, yeah. This is this is how it works. And what's happened is um, is because of the patriarchy that the cities have said we're going to get rid of all these like mix of female and male flowers and we're just going to plant all male flowers because we don't want to have this whole wash wash bagosh going back and forth failing to realize that the pollen is male flower semen and so what they've basically did, did is just turned all these medians and stuff in the sausage fests where you got a bunch of male flowers there and they're just you know, getting the rocks off and there's nowhere for this stuff to go. So it just accumulates. And then everyone else has to reap the unfortunate, unfortunate side effects, which is allergies. Yes. Rather than just being female first and planting all female flowers, if they got no semen to worry about. Right. So, I mean, Hey, look, it adds up to me. <laughs> I, I, you say you said you don't know if it's if it's fact or not. Adds up to me. That's that sounds that makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense to me that they would think, oh, you know what? Let's plant all the male flowers, and then yeah, and then we, it's so the we male don't flowers have to deal with like, uh, rotten apples on the ground and anything if we don't have the female ones. 
Well, now now we have all this pollen and no apples, no apples. And I tell you what, apples don't give me allergies. Stuffy noses. Yeah. Apple a day keeps the chimpanzees away. There you go. Exactly where I was going. Yeah. Well, that that is interesting. That is an interesting fact that may or may not be a fact. I'm gonna roll with it. Let's just say that's the truth. 100%. I'll take it. Okay, that's a great final thought. I like that. Thanks. There was there was suspense. There was um there was a villain, man, humans. <laughs> I like that. Um, my final thought is that um, I'm my my final thought is that I am pretty close to actually getting part of this with this Mandalore's debacle, getting rid of my Xbox PC Game Pass. And part really? of that reason being is that, look, if you combo the ultimate, it's $18 mm-hmm. a month. Mm-hmm. Used to be like 15 or something. Uh, but it's $18 a month, almost $20 a month. And for this game, Manor Lords, I don't know if it still is now, but when it came, when it released, mm-hmm. it was on sale for $30. It usually sells for 40 So in the intro of like two months, the only game I really pay play on PC Game Pass has been Manor Lords. I don't really pay anything else. So I could have just bought the game on Steam, not had this loading issue, and um, came out maybe over the course of two months, six bucks cheaper. Right. So it, it just comes to a fact is as there's less interesting games to play on there, you know, I may just go ahead and default to like, hey, I'm not going to pay for it anymore. I, I would have... I, I would maybe even opt for not having it at all. If anything, I might skip ultimate and go down to just console. Um, because I think I might want to jump back into Starfield at some time. But maybe not. I don't know. You know? But yeah, I am I definitely you. considering that. It's like uh kind of like having a car, like a new car and an old car. Like a new mm-hmm. car, you have this payment. You're paying you know, three hundred dollars every month. Boom, 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 boom. But if you have an older car, and you you know you paid up front, it, you know it was three grand. Now mm-hmm. you don't have a car payment, but you know, say six months in, you have to drop eight hundred to, you know, repair your AC unit inside because it's not blowing anything, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or your your heating cool. What is that called? I don't know, my, my heating thing went in my truck one year. You know, that was a grand. But uh, yeah. I wasn't dropping 300 every single month. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah, no, I definitely feel you. Instead of paying, you know, almost 20 bucks a month, if you spend, you know, 30 bucks in one month and then you don't spend any in three months, you've saved money. Right. That's true. Now, I, I, I agree with this analogy, though, somewhat. In your analogy, I'm actually more of a pay $300 a month car type of guy. Yeah, you don't have to deal with anything. Because you don't have to deal with anything. If something comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if X- Xbox Game Pass is like paying $200 a month to access for newly certified used cars. If that makes any sense. It's mm-hmm. so like, hey, you want to drive a 2014 Ford Escape? All right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's cool. Um, you know what I'm saying? Rather than like a 2008 neon or something i don't know you know mm-hmm. but yeah i've i've been wondering that so uh it's eh, I'll, I'll make a decision on it i think i think i'm opting towards getting rid of it especially if manor lords is still available on steam i'll have a different save though i, know, I gotta think this stuff through yeah yeah well that leads us to the end of level 102 of the thoughts of players podcast if you like what you heard please uh, subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. We are on Apple Podcasts. We are on YouTube Music, wherever they put the Google at. Uh, We're on Amazon Music. We're everywhere. We're on Spotify. We are everywhere. Um, if you want to follow us on the socials, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash thoughts and players. Like it's all one word. We are on Instagram and TikTok at thoughts.players. Twitter at thoughtsplayer2. And um, we're also on YouTube where we upload video versions of the podcast every week. Check us out there. Uh, give us a like, a follow, subscribe. I mean, how am I messing that up? I watch YouTube all the time. Every single, every single video is like, like and subscribe. But I'm not going to do that because 
to all the other socials. It's everyone know? else. We're not going to beg for it. All right. No. We're not yeah. You, you throw it out there, and that's what it is. You know. It is what it is. Also, if you want to support us, there's two ways you can do so. <laughs> the first is getting merch from our spring store, like this um the Marty merch, like this this phone case, which has saved my phone many a time, many a time. So it's solid. Uh, you can also um, support us on Patreon. We have three tiers: two, five, and seven dollar tier. Each offers different different goodies and bits. Um, I think I've mentioned before that we'll have the uh, Lost Episode 99 on there, as well as Episode 2 of the uh, Game Dev Tycoon playthrough. So look for those if you're on there. Um, uh, or if not, you want to wait a little bit, they'll eventually come to YouTube. Um, probably not the level 99, but the Game Dev Tycoon series may be a little bit more when it's further along, and it makes more sense uh, to drop it there. Uh, but that right. is it for me. David, is there anything else you would like to add? Peace. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level.